Our understanding of eyes and the visual system has evolved over centuries. So, when did the field of optometry begin? In 1267, English philosopher Roger Bacon was the first to mention the improvement of sight with lenses. Word spread throughout Europe and 20 years later, an unknown artisan invented the world's first spectacles in northern Italy in 1286. The first people to wear spectacles were scholars and monks, whose professions required up-close viewing and observation of literature and scripts. With the invention of the printing press in 1452, the demand for spectacles grew. A few centuries later, German astronomer Johannes Kepler, well known for his discovery of the major laws of planetary motion, was the first to accurately describe image formation on the retina in 1604. In his studies with the newly invented Keplerian telescope and his observation of light and lenses, Kepler demonstrated how concave lenses correct nearsightedness and convex lenses correct farsightedness. With interest towards corrective spectacles booming, Spanish physicist Benito Daza de Valdez authored the first book on optometric principles entitled The Use of Eyeglasses in 1623. Daza de Valdez devised an alternate technique to capture visual acuity, involving discerning rows of mustard seeds or small print at various distances. Fast forward 160 plus years to a frustrated and aging American inventor, Benjamin Franklin asked his optician to cut his distance lenses in half and his reading lenses in half and join the two. Thus, the invention of double spectacles or bifocals was born in 1784. In 1851, German physicist Hermann von Helmholtz discovered the ophthalmoscope to show his students how the pupil at times appears dark and at other times appears light. Helmholtz was also the first person to view a human fundus with the assistance of this ophthalmoscope. Dutch professor Hermann Snellen wrote on many ophthalmic topics, but his most famous contribution to the field of optometry was his visual acuity charts. He devised a formula that would express any individual's eyesight in the form of a fraction. The Snell and Acuity charts were first published in 1862. Finally, the word optometry was coined in 1865 by Dutch scholar J.W. Verschoor in his doctoral dissertation, Optometers in Optometry. In 1872, the first optometry school was established, the Chicago College of Ophthalmology and Autology, later known as the Illinois College of Optometry. Years later, contact lenses were on the scene. Adolf Fick fit the first scleral contacts in 1888. At 18 millimeters thick, the contacts were thick, impermeable to oxygen, and uncomfortable. In 1892, optometrist Charles Prentice charged a patient $3 for an eye exam in the United States. Backlash came from the medical community, and Prentice was threatened with a lawsuit. So, he used the power of the pen to explain why the states should recognize the profession of optometry. Charles Prentice is known as the father of optometry. In 1898, Prentice helped organize what we know today as the American Optometric Association to financially and legally support optometrists being sued for fitting glasses without medical licenses. In 1901, Minnesota was the first state to lawfully recognize optometry and set regulations. By 1921, all states had these laws. Fifty years after the first glass-blown contacts, Theo Obrig and John Mullen created the first plastic contact lenses in 1938. In 1951, the NBEO exam was established to accurately assess the qualifications and competence of practicing optometrists. President Lyndon B. Johnson established the National Eye Institute in 1968 as a branch of the National Health Institute. This was the first government organization dedicated to research on vision disorders and eye diseases. In 1971, Rhode Island passed the first law that allowed optometrists to use diagnostic drugs to treat patients. All states soon followed with diagnostic pharmaceutical agent laws by 1989. Congress passed a law in 1976 that embedded optometric services in VA hospitals across the United States. It took more than 20 years to see optometric services included in the Medicare Act and approved by Congress. In 1998, the first law authorizing optometrists to use lasers for certain treatments was passed in Oklahoma. 
Today, the profession of optometry is thriving. The importance of legislation and innovation are evident throughout its history. From the beginning, the Illinois College of Optometry has fostered the evolution and development of the nation's best prepared optometrists. We're proud to be at the forefront of the field, as we have been since 1872. What optometry becomes in the future is up to all of us.